Let's bring in Dennis Kenji Kipker from Bremen, Germany. He is the professor of IT security law at HSB City University of Applied Sciences. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us here on the program. Now, first off, walk us through how these surveillance companies operate and how they use the information and data they get uh, access through social media companies. Yeah, the problem that we face here is definitely complex. So. Uh, we have a large number of globally active companies that create surveillance uh, software. And the best known example in this context is already mentioned is our Israeli company NSO, uh, which developed the spy software Pegasus, which is well known and used by numerous countries. And this program can be infiltrated into cell phones all over the world um, without the owner of being aware of it. And once installed, it collects every piece of information and every communication that takes place on the cell phone, turning the device so-called into a tracking uh, bug that is active all times and this is hardly there's hardly any resistance to this um, as the people affected uh, do not notice anything about it and it has also become known that messenger systems such as whatsapp are abused uh, to get users to install spyware uh, on their systems but these are by no means all the attack channels uh, which are used by these companies and social media are also used to tap confidential information in what is supposed to be friendly non-committal small talk and in the meantime we have a real market of a global surveillance industry uh, including providers from macedonia india and china right and we're uh, witnessing that with every upcoming generation more and more of our lives are being shifted to the digital world. I mean, we have NFTs now, not to mention the metaverse. How do you think social media companies are going to balance people being safe on the internet, but at the same time not being subjected to losing all their privacy? Yeah, this question is in fact squaring the circle. Uh, because, of course, social media providers also have a considerable um, economic interest in offering their services and evaluating user data in the processes um, they have. And the case of Facebook, in my opinion, in particular, has already shown in the past um, that such companies are far from acting altruistically. And, of course, in the case that has just come um, to light, it is also in, in Facebook's interest to publicly warn these 50,000 users that are affected by these services because no one wants to risk infecting with malware when using Meta's services. And one possible way here is to regulate social networks more closely than before, um, especially with regard uh, to the spread of false information, which is a problem, definitely, because a lot of information is posted um, in these social networks without being checked by anyone. In any case, um, it is up to the states uh, to reduce um, the market power of these social networks um, right here. Right, and there's only so much uh, that social media companies do to protect its users. And as a mother of two children who are likely going to spend a lot of time online, what can we do as users to make the digital world a safer place to be in? Yeah, you can only keep reminding social network users to check what you post um, before you post it because um, or everyone should know the internet never forgets and also one should be careful with information sources uh, that come from news feeds and actually check them for accuracy and in general uh, you should not only use social networks to research for information because otherwise you will quickly get into so-called filter bubbles um, that only show you the information that the algorithm has previously selected for you and for children in particular as you mentioned before um, it can make perfect sense to limit online time and uh, time spent on social networks um, in order to counteract dependencies of children when using the internet. Right, um, Professor, we're very focused on all the negatives uh, that are coming out of these uh, surveillance companies, but I'm wondering if there are any positives to them. Do any uh, good come out of these companies? Of course, there are state interests of doing surveillance, and uh, there are also um, legal interests for tapping, for example, um, smartphones or online services. But in fact, um, we have seen many cases where uh, such technology has been abused, and this is a risk that you already have here. And we have seen it in the spy software case of Pegasus, where uh, there was a big surveillance problem um, without any um, legal background behind it. And this is a problem uh, we are facing more and more in our connected and uh, digitized society. All right, Professor Dennis Kenji Kipker, thank you so much for joining us here on the News Hour and sharing that information with us.